A drizzly Saturday in Salzburg, Austria. More than 7,000 poker fans line up around an arena, waiting several hours, hoping to get a look at one man, Phil Ivey. Phil is one of the most talked about and revered, and I also think feared, players today. Uh, he is absolutely hot right now. Phil Ivey quietly making some noise again. Ivey is the greatest poker player on the planet. Come on. At 33 years old, he's won 22 tournaments worldwide and reportedly won $7 million last year in online poker alone. Even opponents say there is nobody better. You're the king, baby! Feel Ivy number one! But it's the internet buzz of how much money Ivy's won playing poker and how much he's willing to gamble that have made him a worldwide phenomenon. The thing that makes me really good at poker is that I have this complete disregard for money. When I sit at a table and if I need to bet three, four hundred thousand in a hand and, and I'm bluffing, I just don't care. Ivy had never taken the media behind the scenes of his much talked about lifestyle until this past September. E60 joined him on a four day, four country joyride destined for Austria. He began at his home in Las Vegas. The first stop, Foxwoods Casino in Connecticut. In anticipation of Ivy's arrival, butlers prepare a two-story villa so exclusive, it can't be reserved. It's for only the highest rollers. I'll take a walk upstairs and show you the other bedroom. Yeah, why not? But Ivy has no interest in the room. He's here to gamble. Not by playing poker, that's his day job. This is a dice tour, and he's rolling craps, where each bet is for anywhere from $30,000 to $50,000. Uh, so how are you doing there? I won. Within 20 minutes, he's ready to move on. And before midnight, Ivy is back on his jet with his entourage, wow. his manager, trainer, and golf coach. Uh, how much did you win? I won uh, 185000 I think. That was in 20 minutes? Yeah, it was, it was pretty it was pretty sweet. It happened pretty quickly. Is that a normal thing for you when you gamble like that? Well, you know, I gamble for lots of money all the time, so it's not really, you know, that's just a normal day. We just decide to fly on out here and, and shoot some dice and see what happens. Playing dice in the bathroom, you know, helped us get through life. If we had $40, we'd put it together, we could make $200 in the bathroom. Ivy grew up in Roselle, New Jersey. His father, Phil, who died four years ago, worked in construction. His mother, Pam, worked in an insurance office. Neither were gamblers, so it was Ivy's grandfather who taught eight-year-old Phil how to play poker. He lived downstairs. He had air conditioning, and we didn't. So I would always sneak downstairs and go play with him, and uh, he would teach me to play with pennies. He used to cheat because he really didn't want me to play, but I loved it right away. When he wasn't seeking out neighborhood poker games, 16-year-old Ivy was flipping burgers at this McDonald's in New Brunswick. But minimum wage wasn't enough. He wanted to be rich as fast as possible. He said, I don't want to be like you and Dad, working 9 to 5, 40 hours a week, and just living a mediocre lifestyle. I thought there's nothing wrong with my lifestyle. I thought I was doing okay. After high school, Ivy worked as a telemarketer to increase his bankroll, but his paycheck never lasted very long. Only a two-hour bus ride from Atlantic City, the 18-year-old Ivy hit the casinos every weekend to practice playing poker, in hopes of making it big. I would play 16, 18 hours a day, every day, just around the clock. Go and play, come back, go to sleep, and get right up and go back and play again. That was my life. Every sin you could think of is in a casino. I thought, where did I go wrong? There were times where I uh, lost all my money at night and I didn't have any where to stay and I slept under the boardwalk a couple nights. It's kind of a disgusting feeling waking up to the sun, but um, you know, I, what could you do?
day two of our dice tour. Ivy is welcomed with a private gambling suite at the Casino de Montreal and a $40,000 craps table built just for him. He writes a check for a million bucks in chips. Within a few minutes, he's down $365,000. Fifteen minutes later, he's up $1.5 million. And then, he handed the dice to me. How'd you do? Should have won more. I won a little bit this time. Happy about the performance? The dice broke even. I'm happy about... Yeah. But that other guy I got with us, he's a jinx. No. Really? You can tell by the way he was throwing the dice, it was like he was throwing two bricks. On my final roll, Ivy lost $240,000. I remember you walked into the room and I went broke. I remember that. I know what you walked away with that day. So you couldn't have gone broke. No, I, I just lost when you walked in the room. Here's my man. Still, in Montreal, Ivy spent a little more than 30 minutes gambling and left up $750,000. His total for the trip, nearly one million dollars, earned in just under an hour. Do you have a threshold of how much is too much to gamble? If I start feeling the burn, then I know it's time to stop. But you know, that burn just doesn't come along too much or, or these days. At 21, Ivy couldn't make the millions he wanted to in Atlantic City. So he moved to Las Vegas with his now wife, Lucetta, and officially became a pro poker player. In three years, he won four World Series of Poker events, worth almost $550,000. Still, Ivy needed more. So at 24, he entered one of the biggest cash games in the world, at Larry Flint's Hustler Casino near L.A., a game where you can lose hundreds of thousands of dollars in just one hand. It was very seductive for people like Phil, and I wasn't sure he was going to live up to the reputation that preceded him. I remember the specific game. Uh, he called me. He's like, you know, I want you to come sit behind me. I mean, I'm down. You know, I have about 50000 left to my name. I never played that high, so, you know, it was something new to me. He says, this is my last time playing. If I don't win this time, I'm not going to play anymore. And that day, he just kept winning and kept winning and kept winning. I believe he won, you know, a couple million. That was the greatest thing that ever happened to him. We're on our third country within about 24 hours. So how common is something like that? It's, um, it's pretty normal. I've been uh, doing a lot of traveling. I'm in Amsterdam right now, it's one of the prettiest cities in the world. I mean, I love walking around it, and I'm just going to enjoy myself. If you're not gambling on a day like today, does it feel like a day off? Uh, yeah, because it is a day off. Every day I'm either playing poker or uh, blackjack or, or crafts or betting on the sporting event or something. So, you know, I'm just kind of, I'm unwinding. Ivy, Ivy, Ivy! Ivy's made more than $12 million playing in tournaments, which have one-time buy-ins and offer fixed prize money. But he's made more in Las Vegas cash games, where you play as long as you can afford to, and the pots creep into the millions. In 2006, he was part of a team of 15 poker players who pooled their money to each play real estate billionaire Andy Beal. Every pot was between like 500000 and a million and a half. So they were, uh, you know, it was pretty big hands. Over three days, when Ivy went head-to-head -head with Beal, he won the group $16.6 .6 million. With a bankroll now as big as his ambition, he bought his mother a condo in Las Vegas and put his sister through college and now law school. He also bought something for himself, a $500,000 McLaren. What's an obscene amount of money to you? I mean, if you... <laughs> well, I mean, you know, you could play in a poker game where you could lose five, ten million, I guess. Ivy's never been afraid to go all in, but what he's most famous for is his intimidating glare. I watched it on TV one time and I said, do you know that you have this look on your face when you play and you just go like this and you move your eyes? Everyone looks at that face and says, man, that guy is cold hearted. <laughs> well, maybe I'm a little cold hearted. So I'm cold hearted at the poker table, that's for sure. I mean, I could be friends with you, but if we're playing poker, I'm trying to bust you. It's just that simple. 
Poker players will tell you that theirs is a game of skill, not luck. A test of wills against opponents, not the house. And Phil Ivey knows it takes more than a look to win. So I'm good in these situations. I know. Just so you know. He has a desperate need to be the best. He has a tremendous amount of talent and fearlessness at the poker table. It's scary to try and play against. It becomes psychological more so than uh, the math. Um, so you have to really kind of get in their heads and, and, and figure out what they're trying to do to you in, in the pots and what, why they're saying what they're saying, why they're doing what they're doing, why are they acting this way, you know, what's the meaning behind it. Back in Austria, Phil Ivey is building his...